these are my brothers blood and and not blood so um yeah it's <laughs> are we gonna play till we win <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I, I, I really don't know I'd, I'd be lying if i said it wasn't part of the reason why we're still playing like even the last couple of years <clears throat> just say okay let's give it one more go here's the one two pitch and that's lined into the outfield that's 400 hits in the ibl career of dan barra brendan coley looks like he came in at first base here's the one smashed to left field by barra and it's gone Dan Mara goes yard and the Toronto Maple Leafs lead four to nothing. Dan Mara is going to join the show, second baseman for the Toronto Maple Leafs in just a moment. Uh, thanks so much for tuning into Leafs Weekly episode eight. So this has been a bit of a slow start for the Maple Leafs to the 2024 campaign. But it feels like there are signs that things are starting to turn around a little bit, especially on the bats side of things for the Maple Leafs this season. And they have a big test coming up on Sunday. That's going to be a game against the London Majors, who are in second place in the Intercounty Baseball League right now. It feels like the Maple Leafs can win that game. It's a statement game and maybe a game that can change the momentum of the Maple Leafs season and, and turn things around in their favor. So. Dan Mara is going to be our guest joining the show here very shortly. Uh, he's a guy who's done something that not a lot of people can say they've done in the Intercounty Baseball League, and it's reached the 400 hit plateau in the regular season. That was a mark that Dan Mara hit earlier this season against the Barry Bay Cats. Uh, and those 400 hits come in less at bats than you might think as well. A guy who's hit over 300 in the regular season in his Intercounty Baseball League career. And one of the most incredible stats that I've seen from Dan Morrow over his career is the fact that he almost never strikes out. In fact, he had a career high in strikeouts last year, just 15 in the entire season. He's never gone over that in his intercounty baseball league career, puts the ball in play a lot and gets a ton of hits for this Maple Leafs team that he's been with since way back in 2011. So we're going to bring in Dan Mara here. Dan, I know this has been a little bit of a slow start for the Maple Leafs this season, but it feels like the bats are starting to come around. Do you feel like things are are getting pretty close here for this Maple Leafs team? Uh yeah. Um obviously a slower start than we've than we wanted to have. Um but <clears throat> we're a pretty veteran bunch and we've sort of notoriously had slower starts. And part of that is just we're an older group and guys are working and have personal commitments. Um, guys like Marcus, who took the summer off last year. Um, so we sort of knew it was going to be a slow start. So I don't think anyone's pressing, but it's definitely good to see some of the bats get going. And even on the, you know, on the other side of the ball, starting to, you know, pick it a little bit better. Obviously, that's been a part we've been looking, been part of what we've, we've been looking to improve on. But Definitely good to see, you know, some of the bats start to get hot. Marcus included, Castaldo, my brother. And hopefully we can get the, the rest of us going a little bit here pretty soon. Well, Dan, uh, I got the opportunity to chat with you here. So I, I got to take you back to your roots. Um, the first one I got for you, I mean, you were a kid, you know, back in 2007, 8, 9, playing at uh, South Dakota State. Did you ever think when you came to the Intercounty Baseball League, back then that you would still be here in in 2024 and thriving in the IBL thriving I like that um no definitely not um when we came back I had played here during college um and I knew I would play for a year or two afterwards because a lot of my buddies were playing in the league Cristaldo included um a couple other guys Marcus uh, I think Marcus was still playing pro ball but a couple other guys were in the league Salazzo and them um, so I knew I'd play for a couple of years just because it's something I knew it'd be hard to give up. But the, I would always say that I was going to give it a couple of years and then hang them up. And uh, it just sort of worked out. Uh, I played for a couple of years and then Adam finished school, my brother. So then he played for a couple of summers. And so I told myself, well, OK, I'll play with, you know, Adam's here. It's fun to play with family and, and that kind of thing. So I did that for a couple of years and then Justin got released. And he he played with us. And so then I was like, okay, I'll play for a couple more years. And it just kind of snowballed. And um, yeah, and then you look back and you've been playing for like 10, 10 11 years. So um, definitely didn't expect to be playing for this long. But I love it. And I love being out there with the guys. And I love being in the clubhouse. So I'll do it for 
do it for as long as I can, I guess. You mentioned playing with your brothers, and I, I know it's it's a unique experience to play, have two brothers on a team, but the Maple Leafs have been graced with having three uh, Maras on the team. And I got a chance to talk to your brother, Justin, last year, and, and there was a quote that kind of hit home with me when we were talking about you know his MVP season in 2017, and he said, To be able to do it with this group of guys and my brothers, uh, it would actually mean a lot more to me than, than winning any MVP or any championship. Is, is that kind of a sentiment that all the three of you kind of echo? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, obviously we haven't been uh, fortunate enough to win one in the IBL and winning one at all would be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, winning one with my brothers would be awesome. And um, it, I'd, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't part of the reason why we're still playing. Like even the last couple of years, <clears throat> we just said, okay, let's give it one more go. Added a couple guys. Okay. Team looks good. Let's give it another go. So is definitely a driving factor. Um, and yeah, I couldn't, I agree with, with his sentiment. It would be a blast. Um, I mean, winning the IBL, uh, like as far as hardware goes is what it is. Um, but it's just a, it'd be a blast of a time and uh, a fun summer and maybe a, maybe a nice cap to the career too. Yeah. I, I've talked to John Salazzo about that too. And he, he's excited for the party in toronto if if yeah the Maple Leafs end up winning a championship um i mean you talk about uh, all the years that you've played here on the toronto maple Leafs. um is this something that like i, I know you're actually not that old now you're 34 years old now right and that's right i mean is it really like one more year or do you, do you guys just chase this thing as long as you can until you win a championship yeah uh that's a that's the million dollar question i guess but um <laughs> a thousand dollar question um yeah i mean i would i could say that the last couple of years i've sort of said okay this is my last year this is my last year this is my last year but i mean winning is is would be fun but to me um one of the biggest factors is like are, are the boys getting back together um and once i start hearing that you know Justin wants to play and Adam wants to play and Jordan's playing and Salazzo's playing and we got Marcus back and Lewis is playing. Like once I start hearing that all the pieces are falling into place, you know, like I said, I just love being in the clubhouse. I love being on the field. Uh, these are, uh, these are my brothers, uh, blood and, and non-blood. So, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> are we going to play till we win? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I I really don't know. But yeah, it be it would be nice to get one sooner rather than later though. You've kind of had a unique experience where you've played in this league for so many years and you've also played on the Toronto Maple Leafs for so many years. So you kind of have had a unique experience where you've seen this league evolve and I've only been here for four years. So you would have a much better perspective on this for me, but in the four years I've been here, it seems like the quality of the league has really started to prove on the pitching side, on the batting side. What's kind of the biggest thing you've seen since, you know, the 2009, 10, uh, 11 era of the IBL to now that, that you've seen that's different. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's a good point. Um, I would say in the, in the 10 years I've been playing the quality of the baseball in this league has definitely improved. And I would say if I had to pinpoint one aspect, uh, it's hard to do because it's kind of every aspect, but I would say the pitching, the quality of the pitching has definitely gone up. Even when I started in this league, everyone had like a guy or two that was pretty good. But I think now you see night, uh, every night a, a guy who's has an idea what he's doing. And he may not like may not have the stuff that he, he used to kind of thing, um, but definitely has an idea what he's doing. So as a hitter, that's kind of what I've noticed as what's improved the most over the last 10 years. But in general, you're seeing a lot, a lot more local guys finish college and come playing in this league. Um, you're seeing a lot of guys, you know, get released from frontier or affiliated ball come here to play, to keep playing, to try and get back into baseball. And some have done it and we played with a few Evan Elliott last year and a couple other guys in the league. So it's definitely turned into a pretty high quality level of baseball. I'd say. 
Uh, seeing all the pitchers evolve uh, is interesting, right? If a lot has changed on the mound. Something that hasn't changed is you've been consistently able to turn in a really good batting average every single year uh, throughout pretty much right to the start of when you played in the Intercounty Baseball League. What what have you had to do on your side to kind of adapt to the pitching? Because, I mean, things are – it's a bit faster now, right? Uh, Yeah, yeah. You're seeing a little <laughs> bit more – you're seeing a little bit more velo for sure. Um. Yeah. Um, honestly, uh, I've just taken pride in having the same approach, um, day in, day out. Like I'm not the type of guy who's gonna, you know, put up the crazy numbers. I've never been that guy, even in college or, you know, even in my younger days, I just kind of have taken pride in staying within myself and having that same approach and, you know, getting the odd, getting the odd bloopy here and there, the odd punch and Judy over second base. Those always help. I I joke all the time that you got to play in this you got to play in the league for 10 years to get a few of those bleeders so um but you know I joke about it but at the end of the day you still have to have the right approach to get the ball in play and to stay on the ball and hit the ball the other way so I've always taken pride in just having a professional approach every time I go out there and I've been lucky enough that the that some of the results have you know have come with that but um yeah, I don't know that I've uh, that I've done anything anything special. I just try and try and do me every time I'm out there. Look, Dan, uh, whether they're bleeders or not, you've had a chance to get over 400 of them hits in the Intercounty Baseball League. When you hear that number, what what, what does that mean to you? That means I've been playing too long, <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's it's uh, like I said, uh, and I think I've told you before, honestly, I didn't even know I was approaching that number until I was told like a few weeks ago. So it's not definitely not something I, I look at or or track. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy it happened. But to be honest, it's yeah, like, I guess a silver lining to uh, to playing too long in the IBL. But yeah. <laughs> um, It'd be nice. It'd be nicer to get. It'd be nicer to get a ring to walk away with a ring than it would be a couple, you know, a few hundred hits. Yeah. Okay. So before before I let you go, uh, I know this team needs to win a couple more ball games to get to that IBL finals, uh, a place that uh, you've known maybe won too many times in in your intercounty baseball league career. Uh, what needs to happen for the Maple Leafs this year uh, to get back to the finals and maybe win it this time around? Uh. Yeah, we've definitely had it. Like I, like I was saying earlier, we, we've kind of always had a little bit of a slower start. Um, and part of that is like, you know, logistically getting guys on the field. Um, even this year, we're still short a couple guys. Um, but the other half of that is that we're just a veteran group that knows that, you know, in a league where eight out of nine teams make the playoffs, you just you have to be playing your best baseball in, you know, July going into August. And we've been able to do that the last bunch of years. Um, and that's kind of the same plan this year. Like we never, we don't want to start this slow. Um, but you're starting to see some of the bats come around. I think we got to, you know, defense has got to be a little bit tighter. We got to continue to have good at bats. Um, you know, our pitchers are doing their thing. Teams are scoring runs on us, but we're not walking a ton of guys. We're doing the right things. Um, and sometimes look, baseball's tough. You, you got to get the bounces, um, in order to have success. So hopefully those are going to come, but really we're not going to, ch- you know, we don't change anything. We're not really a team where no one's going to c- come into the room and give some season changing speech or anything. Maybe we'll get, maybe we'll get the the guys together for some off field for some extra curriculars to, to get it going, but we're not really, a, uh, we're not looking to anyone to give us some sort of speech, even though we got a lot of veterans, we just sort of have this, you know, quiet, confidence about knowing when it's time to to really buckle down and um that's the plan so uh, we just gotta you know first and foremost we got to get everyone in the field for every game and then we just got to you know play the game the right way everyone knows how if if there's any advice i give guys it's that like everyone's played at a high level of baseball on our team so everyone knows what to do it's just a matter of having the focus to to get it done and then then results will come Hey, Dan, we're looking forward to seeing how the rest of this season plays out. Uh, Best of luck the rest of the way, and uh, thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Take care, Thomas.